Hey guys, I'm Rich from NeoWins. Here we're unboxing the HP EliteBook 840G7. So um, I do, I actually have the G5 right here, which is the last 800 series Elite book that I reviewed. And the 800 series is meant to be more mainstream. If you're familiar with Elite books, the 1000 series is the premium. That's the best of the best. And then, um, so the 800 series is really always all about bringing some of those premium features from the 1000 series down to the 800 series. So um, I always like reviewing them because for some reason, HP always specs them out. Like when I reviewed this one, it's got the 4G LTE, it's got the Core i7, and this one had like 32 gigs of RAM and a one terabyte SSD and a dedicated GPU, like damn, you know? <laughs> um, but anyway, this one's actually got a Core i7-10810U, which is a Hexacore vPro 15 watt chip. It's the top of the line as far as uh, Intel business CPUs go. It's got 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gig SSD, um, Intel 4G LTE, so awesome. Like I'm gonna love playing with this thing. So like I said, this is the A40. Um, again, if you're not familiar with Elite Book naming, um, there's like the tiers 800, 1000, the, that's, you know, how premium it is. And then the, the second number goes to screen size. So uh, 830 is 13 inch, 840 is 14 inch. You will see some reviews floating around for the 830 G7. Um, they did, they gave us all a choice. If you want the 13 inch or the 14 inch, and I chose the 14 inch because I, I prefer that form factor a little more. The units are exactly the same. The new features are exactly the same, you know. So competitors to this unit would be... Um, uh, Lenovo's ThinkPad T14, which is the best-selling ThinkPad T-Series. Obviously, it's mainstream. Um, they also mentioned the T14S in the briefing and the Dell Latitude 7410. Um, what's nice is that when they when they mention all these com competing laptops, I've, is that I've reviewed all these, so I know exactly what to expect. Um, on the 13-inch side, you have the, the Latitude 7310 and then the uh, Lenovo ThinkPad X13. So... You know, just just what we're looking at across the board, and HP did note that it is the lightest. You, when you when if you watch uh, HP or if you read their their press briefings or you know press releases or whatever, you'll see the words "world's most" or "world's first" a lot because they love to point that out, and I don't blame them. You know, um, but anyway, it's the lightest aluminum. Um, you know, it, laptop and it's and it's kind of I'd say in its class for for what what they're comparing it to, um, it is heavier than say the the Dell Latitude seventy four ten and the ThinkPad T fourteen S, but those are carbon fiber. Now HP likes aluminum. Aluminum is a very heavy material, so it's lighter than other aluminum laptops in its class. So the, the body has been shrunken down. The bezels are smaller. Um, they've, refined, they've, they've refined the design a lot, which is why I have that previous generation model here. This one I found, it, it had a lot of cool specs in it. I found it to be a little buggy, which um, I didn't uh, focus on in my review because I've reviewed a lot of Elite books and they're not typically buggy. So, um, you know, like that one, I don't think I could even boot it up anymore. <laughs> but uh, Yeah, so let's open this up. We have a charger in here. I want to look at the charger first because one thing that HP pointed out is that it does have a barrel charger port, but you can charge through USB Type-C. So what we have here, we do have a USB Type-C charger that uh, this model ships with. They did say that you you um, you can have it shipped with either one. It's probably a little bit of a premium to have it shipped with the USB-C charger. And the nice thing about the, the pin or barrel charger, whatever you want to call it, um, is that it, it, it maintains backward compatibility. You're a business, this is a business PC. So if your business is kind of standardized on, on HP Elite books, um, especially from the 800 series, you are gonna have these chargers lying around, these barrel chargers lying around. So now you can still use them. Whereas the, the 1000 series is completely on USB Type-C now. This one also had a... Uh, Barrel charger, obviously. Um, so they're, they're not killing it off yet, and that's supposed to make it a little easier. Oh, this is all one piece. It's not like a top and bottom. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> usually it's like just like a top and bottom kind of a, a bracket deal, but this is 
It was completely in encased in here, but all right, all right. Let's keep going. All right. So we can see, if I put it right on top there, that this is already... I can get rid of this. Uh, <laughs> it makes it a little bit easier. We can see already that it is much smaller. Now, the, keep in mind, these are both the 840. These are both the 14-inch model. So the, from the G5 to the G7, it's much smaller. Uh, what they compared it to in the briefing was a G6 to the G7. Obviously, they don't have the G6, but they said it is 9% smaller. By the way, compared to the G6, again, 85% um, screen to body ratio with a 34% thinner top bezel, 19% thinner side bezel, and 29% thinner chin. So you can see if we just line up the sides, you do lose, uh, the, the footprint is much smaller, and most of that just comes from one side, because if we line up this, there's, there's not a whole lot um, of, of extra space here. Okay, so now we can get, get rid of this older one. But by the way, you can just see that this has sort of flat edges around it. And it has that little lip there to, to make it a little bit easier to open. Because, and the reason I bring that, bring that up is because now on this model, which by the way, just picking it up, you could feel so much lighter. This thing is under three pounds, 2.95 pounds to be exact. And... It feels great. It's a it's a good weight. I mean, for a mainstream PC, that's real a mainstream aluminum PC. That's really impressive. So this has the 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 tapered design here, so it should be a lot easier just to open up, and you could do it with one finger just like that, nice and easy. Okay. Um, it does still have the uh, the little little nub right there. It's not called a track point. Uh, Lenovo calls it a track point. Lenovo puts that thing on all ThinkPads. HP only, as far as I know, does it on the on the 800 series. I don't think I've, I've reviewed anything underneath that, but it's there. You know, it's something that that I think most people like to ignore. Uh, they do have a re refined keyboard, which. Um, you know, I love the keyboard on, say, the, the the 1040 and the 1030 and the Elite Dragonfly, so I think this is going to be fantastic. HP is doing a great job with the, with the keyboards on their business PCs, so that's going to be really cool. They said it's quieter, and they said that in an independent study, when compared to the Lenovo ThinkPad T14S, people thought the T14S was actually too loud. So... Um, this should be even quieter, and that's why I was kind of hitting it. And it does, it feels pretty quiet, I gotta say. You know, it, it's, it does a good job there. Uh, we have a, what, a one, 180 degree hinge here, so that's kind of expected. Uh, and really, just everything feels more premium than we've seen, um, you know, on, on the last one. The last one felt very mainstream and when you look and it's it's thinner it's lighter it has a smaller footprint like compared to this like this looks and feels mainstream it's a little thicker it's not you know I, I, it's 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 mainstream <laughs> it's uh, also if we look on this we have angled edges on the back which make it a little bit more sexy like this could pass for Probably, you know, a, a thousand series elite book from, you know, two years ago or so. So it's it's really cool. On this side over here, we've got ports, two USB type A. I mean, um, based on the markings, that's got to be USB 3.2 Gen 1 for 5 gigabits per second speeds. We have our headphone jack over here. And then on the other side, we've got Thunderbolt 3. And we've got HDMI. And then, of course, that barrel charger port. So... It does have the ba the um, the barrel charge. You can charge through USB Type C if you'd like, and like I said, it does ship with that USB Type C charger. What's cool about Thunderbolt three, and I obviously I haven't tested this, I haven't even turned it on yet, but with HP they always use full Thunderbolt three ports, which means that one of these ports should power two four K monitors, and that shouldn't be an issue at all. You know, and and with HP, I just kind of have that faith that it's gonna that it's gonna work right out of the gate, and and that's just just a nice thing about HP. Like it's not always the case with other OEMs. In here, there we go. That pops out, and that is gonna be a SIM tray because this does have 4G LTE. And if you know me, you know that I love 4G LTE. So if we boot this up, 
You can see, by the way, the chin is much smaller than we've seen in previous generations. The 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 top bezel. Did this not turn on? Am I going to have to charge this? Uh, top bezel. It it has the webcam. It's got a privacy guard right up here, and it looks like it also has an IR camera up there. So, you know, obviously, you can't use both at once. You can't block the camera, and and use facial recognition, but. You know, you have a choice. You can use that, that privacy guard. You can use the IR camera. Now we're booting this thing up. I've just put it on a charger. I don't know if the battery is actually dead. Sometimes it's not dead and you, it just wants a little bit of a charge before it'll let you boot it up. But see, protected by HP Sure Start, and that's a security feature that's found in Elite Books and it's found in um, all of them that I've seen. And what that does is it checks the BIOS against a, like a gold master copy. And if the BIOS is corrupted, it will just, um, it will replace it. So it's it's kind of a self-healing BIOS type of thing. And it's one of many security features that, that HP loads onto its Elite Books. Um, while we're waiting just a moment, we you can see we also have speakers on the sides of the keyboard. I didn't call those out yet. Um, Bang & Olufsen, that's typical for HP. And they they always sound pretty good. So, you know, it's, and it's nice to have them on on. On the keyboard so those speakers are firing right up at you okay so i i gotta be honest this is the most uh painful it's ever been to go through the windows 10 uh out of box experience for me and i gotta say considering how buggy the uh 840 g5 was for me uh, uh this does not look promising i i i had to I, when I went to connect to, uh, to Wi-Fi through the out-of-box experience, uh, it did not go well. It it sat on, for about five minutes, it just sat trying to connect, and it kept saying, like, we're working on it, we're working on it. Those little quirky Windows 10 setup messages that everyone hates because it's delaying you, and the little the quirk of the message is not making it more pleasant. So, um yeah, so now it restarted when I thought I was finally done. And we're going to see how this goes. But I got to say, that, like, like, you know, that, that, the, the oh, we're, we're starting at the beginning now. This is um, horrific. Uh, I've, I've never seen anything like this in the uh, Windows 10 setup experience. Okay, yeah, so I think this is how it actually goes, where, like, it's not actually going to ask me to set up a network, because I already set up a network, but it's just going to sit there. Now let's see what's new from Windows, and uh, it's it's going to go on to the next step, and we're going to get through to that step, and then maybe it'll just restart again, or it'll, it'll actually allow me into the PC, I don't know. All right, so I, I'm done trying to show what's on the screen, because this is, hopefully this is almost over. Uh, it says this might take several minutes and, you know, we'll see how it goes because, um, to be clear, I went through the entire Windows 10 out-of-box experience twice. Um, that, that includes, you know, connecting to a network, going through all those annoying um, features that Microsoft wants you to turn on. Um, you know, I, I signed into my account twice. I set up Windows Hello Facial Recognition twice. It did not save any of that. Um, so, and that, that includes on the first one, I had to sit for a good, at least five minutes while it, um, while it tried to connect to a network. And that was something, by the way, connecting to a network is not the hardest part of the <laughs> Windows 10 setup experience. I've seen it hang on signing into an account. I've seen it hang, um, after the setup experience on that whole like like just one more minute that type of thing like that that's going through right now i've seen it hang on that i've never seen it hang on so oh we're in finally um i've never seen it hang on setting up a network and um but it is and so um the reason that that actually does concern me like normally it wouldn't like you know windows 10 the setup experience is just buggy as hell, you know, in general. But the the reason that that actually concerns me... Wait, what's the battery on here? This is... You know, 69, 69%. Nice. Um, but the, the re, just the reason that that actually concerns me is because I do recall having issues with the G5. And the, it, the thing was a buggy machine. It, it wasn't... My issue with that was that it wasn't completely reliable um 
I, I didn't I never felt like I could take that with me as my only machine and and be able to handle it and that it would be able to handle everything you know and um, and and by the way the the reason that I still have this machine um, after probably a couple of years is because one w- when I went to send it back uh, probably about a, a year ago because um, every once in a while I go through everything that I have and then I go to send them all back and I reset everything. I was unable to reset this PC, and that's why I say I don't think I could boot it up right now, because this PC, I, I tried to reset it, something went wrong, tried to reset it, something went wrong, it wouldn't let me reset it, and then I downloaded recovery media, and then I think it just got stuck in a boot loop, a boot loop. and um, since I couldn't really get it in a usable state, I think it just ended up in a drawer, um, so that's the 840G5, and like, like that like this the the out of box experience on this is is really bringing back those flashbacks for me and I, I I almost feel bad that I'm not saying better things about this PC because it's super cool it's it it feels it feels like a premium PC at a mainstream price point like like they really nailed um, that it's lighter it's it's smaller the bezels are smaller the keyboard is better like this has the makings of such a great PC if <laughs> I really wish the out of box experience didn't try to screw me on that you know <laughs> because everything about this is just awesome so I'm gonna stop talking about that but you know um, hopefully everything works out well and I, I you know hopefully hopefully it will you know what I'm saying so anyway guys that's it guys I'll, I'll have a review on this in a few weeks so stay tuned I'm Richard Neowin. Have a great night.